I'd buy that for a dollar. It's not hard to imagine where things are headed. We've seen a growing shift on existing social media websites, be they Twitter or Facebook, YouTube or others, in regards to what content will be allowed or disallowed going forward. This situation becomes even more apparent, with newly developed platforms not only adopting these same policies, but openly advertising them as a feature to potential new users. Hate speech has become the bullet point on a long list of wrong think crimes fired point blank at the heads of content creators in an effort to purge sites of activities or opinions deemed unacceptable by those that run them. However, we are now seeing a transition from a once reactive approach to a proactive one instead. Rather than simply stemming the tide, they are seeking to dam the river. Why ban when you can deny access? Why pull down when you can refuse to put it up in the first place? And this new approach is now shifting its focus into finance rather than simply speech, though I'd argue both are interconnected for better or worse. Google to overhaul advertising policies after growing boycott. We deeply apologize, says company's CBO Philip Schindler, as he announces tougher stance on hateful, offensive, and derogatory content. Now, this particular article is dealing with advertisers and a boycott that happened, and how Google is going to give them more power over where their ads appear and how it's going to run its platform going forward. First, Google itself is going to tighten its policies around what can live on its platforms and what subset of that content can support advertising on it. Starting today, we're taking a tougher stance on hateful, offensive, and derogatory content, Schindler says. The company is also ensuring that fake creators, those who impersonate other channels, can't host advertising. Schindler also says YouTube is taking a hard look at existing community guidelines to see if any content is allowed on the platform that shouldn't be, though no action is promised. Second, the company is promising better controls for advertisers to choose where their money goes and to prevent accidentally spending it on hateful content. The default options for advertisers will be tightened to exclude potentially objectionable content from the off. Advertisers themselves will be given account level tools to exclude specific sites and channels from all of their campaigns at once, as well as more fine tuned controls for when advertisers need specific say over where their ads appear. Third, Schindler writes that advertisers and agencies will be offered more transparency and visibility on where their ads are running. That should help advertisers avoid awkward situations like those that prompted the boycott in the first place, where advertisers only discovered their ads were showing up on extremist content after a Times report. The Google executives also promised to hire significant numbers of people, as well as bring in new AI-powered tools Humpful opinions is God. Humpful opinions is God. Humpful opinions is God. Humpful opinions is God. To increase their company's capacity to review questionable content for advertising. Now, all of this should sound somewhat familiar. We've seen this play out with YouTubers such as PewDiePie, who after having been the subject of a media blitz, saw his partnership with Disney's Maker Studios pulled. While this on its own isn't a death knell to his viability on the platform, it does have an effect. It sends a clear and concise message. Step out of line and you will suffer financially. These MCNs, multi-channel networks, help to manage YouTube accounts and perform a host of services. They mitigate issues common users face, such as content strikes, copyright claims, as well as manage adverts and negotiate pay rates for those ads. The bigger the network, the safer the user. This has a direct relation to revenue generation as well. Issues with MCNs have been long-standing, but it now seems as if Google itself is going to play a more direct role by instituting a yay or nay policy when it comes to if you can make money going forward. It starts with the promise of allowing advertisers more control, but ultimately it will end with users losing complete autonomy. And it isn't too hard to imagine a scenario where in a few years, blacklists exist of users who can't make money off ads on any website through which Google hosts advertising. If you can't outright ban them, Bleed them to death will be the new mantra. But all this does raise a rather interesting issue. Is a bigot's dollar worth less? The crux of the argument coming from companies like Google and others is that they view certain content as hate speech and thus believe it should be disallowed on their platform. It would then follow suit that those consuming that content must be advocates for such hate speech and a bigot in and of themselves for having agreed to view it in the first place. If that's the case, then what value is their view when it comes to advertisers? Is there some magic metric used in economics which weighs the value of the pure against the tainted when it comes to disposable income? If you had a modest channel that generated 2 million views per month on the content you produced, is that of less value to an advertiser than a smaller channel which only generates 200,000 views per month simply based on your political or social viewpoints? Does that not seem counterintuitive?
As an advertiser, would you not want the most eyes on your product or service as possible? I have yet to encounter a television ad that asked me who I voted for, or a magazine ad that asked me my opinion on abortion before having been allowed to view it. So why then is the internet taking such a radically different approach? You could argue that this is a vocal minority forcing policy changes, or that the centralization of so many tech companies in such a specific geographic region plays some kind of role in their shared group vision. But regardless of what is causing it, I have no doubt it's going to become a larger issue going forward. I would argue that this is actually hurtful towards advertisers, that the more control they have, the more responsibility that comes with it. Now that might not sound like a bad thing, but let me give you an example. Let's say I run Jimco. We're the best goddamn widget company which exists. Now I put in a order with Google. I want to put my advertisements up on certain types of videos, widget related videos. Now let's say there are a hundred different videos and my ads get put on all of those. And the combined total for all those videos is 5 million views. Now I don't have much say on which of those videos my advertisements go up on. Just a, a basic notion of I want it to be widget related. I don't know about the politics of the creator. I don't know about their social viewpoints. It doesn't matter to me. I'm in the business of selling widgets. That's all I care about. But now here comes a complaint. Somebody says, hey, wait a minute. Account number 98 said something I don't like. How dare you advertise on account number 98? Not my problem. I don't really have control over it going up on account 98. I'm sorry you're offended, but there's not a lot I can do about it. That would be the old system. Under the new system, however, when they come in and they say account number 98 is a problem, well, they know I have more control now. Okay, I'll pull that advertisement off that video. Well, that just cost me 100,000 views for that one complaint. Now, maybe that particular video had extremist views. Maybe that was a widget-related video about forcing eugenics on people. I don't know. Maybe it was some crazy extremist thing. And so you can hand wave it away and you can say, okay, I'm at least justified in doing that. But as we've seen, offense is a perpetual thing. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. Sure, they label the most outrageous and outlandish things as hate speech right now. But as time goes on, that definition is going to get more wishy-washy. Soon it's not going to just be video number 98. It's going to be 14 and 11 and 22 and 34. And as I'm pulling all of these down, I'm losing views. My ability to advertise my product or service is diminishing, and the responsibility I have to take in addressing every single complaint that somebody has over what they find offensive becomes a detriment to my ability to make money and generate revenue. So what's the solution then? A blind pool approach? Do we create a secondary system that has ads assigned based on tiers of popularity in a random manner to mitigate the claim that so-and-so company supported such and such speech? Would that even be a feasible approach? Is a future peer sponsorship rather than standard advertisers, where content creators are more closely connected to the people that are putting up ads with them? I honestly can't say, but it is clear that this will need to be addressed. These changes are coming whether we like them or not, and they'll be all-encompassing. Your blog, your videos, your website will be strangled via the justification that your viewpoints are toxic and thus can't be supported. We've seen a lot of talk over the last few years about alternatives for where you can go to be able to speak your mind, but it might be time to start talking about where the hell you can go to get paid. As we've seen with a majority of tech companies, there is a hive mind groupthink mentality. When one does something, others follow suit. As Google shifts in this policy change, you can expect others to follow along with them. And so while you might have alternatives you can go to right now for your advertising needs for whatever your website or your business may be, be assured that that alternative may well change their mind and may well follow down the exact same path that Google is right now.